Hi guys, welcome to Mike 1K. So today's job is replace the front tyre. Alright, so I'm going to take the front wheel off. Never took the front wheel off on this bike. Easy enough. I have got a manual. Doom, doom, doom. Well, seems dead easy. It's basically a case of removing the calipers, hanging them up, undo the four pinch bolts, take the axle out, drop the tyre out. So easy enough. I'm only replacing the front tyre, I'm putting an Avon 3DXM on, it's supposed to be a good tyre, good right up. I'm not putting the rubber on myself, I'm taking that to a tyre fitter, purely because I haven't got a bead breaker or any tyre levers. Now I know everyone's going to tell me you're supposed to change them in match pairs, but the rear tyre is almost brand new, it's got loads of wear left, at least 6,000 miles left, and I don't see the point in changing tyres just for changing tyres sake. All right. If, once I put the front tyre on, it becomes apparent that the back tyre needs to be matched up, I'll put it on. But the front tyre definitely needs changing, so I'm going to put this Avon on and see how we get on. Um, I bought the Avon tyre offline, a, tyre called, a company called Tyre Tech at Enfield in London. Uh, really good, really, really good service, guys. Um, ordered it lunchtime on the Monday. It was here by Tuesday afternoon. I can't fault it, and it was the cheapest. Avon 3DXM in the country. Um, you looked on eBay, they were about 80 odd quid for a front tyre. I got it delivered for 67, so I can't reckon then highly enough. <laughs> Rewind. I can't reckon, reckon, I can't speak this morning. I can't recommend them highly enough, guys. Alright, so yeah, if you want any tyres, check them out. Tyre Tech Trade in Enfield. I'm not sponsored by them. Yeah, I did pay full price as a customer, I just rang up. You can order online as well, but I rang up. And like I say, ordered on Monday, here on Tuesday. And um, yeah, really good tyre. Um, so tyres. Loads of writing around the tyres. Obviously you've got a direction arrow. I'm not going to talk it. Size, size for this one's 120, 70, 17. That's your front tyre size. Um, the one thing I did check on this tyre was the manufacturing date. So if we look at that there guys, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, in that box there, in, the, in that box there, it says 32.19. So this tyre was produced the 32nd week of 2019. Now the tyre industry say that a tyre shouldn't be sat on a shelf for more than five years, I believe, don't quote me on that. But this one's alright, the 32nd week 2019, probably a year old this tyre, coming up to a year old, alright, from this manufacturing date. So that should be all good. Like I said, you have got direction arrows. Shouldn't have to worry about that unless you're fitting it yourself. Right, so, all right guys, so as you can see, I've got a jack underneath there, block of wood under the crankcase. That's just supporting the bike. The bike's steady, it's not gonna go anywhere. Once I remove that front wheel, there'd be nothing stopping that tipping over. Just having it on the center stand wouldn't be enough. All right, so as you can see there, I've got to remove the calipers here. I'm going to take the speedo drive out, which is here, and then I'm going to undo these two pinch bolts either side, and then there's the axle bolt, and then the tyre should drop out. The reason you jack it up, obviously to stop it falling forward, but you need this clearance down here to be able to remove the wheel. Right, guys, so the first thing I've got to do is remove these two caliper mountain bolts. Now they should have been loctited on these guys. All right, twelve mil socket. Just nip them off. All right, cool. So that's then nipped off. All right, like I said, two twelve mil sockets. Now I don't want this to be hanging on the the hose, so I'm going to have to support it somehow. A little bit of string guys, just cut yourself off a bit, prepare yourself. Now you can't let them hang on the hose, so you've got to fashion some kind of securing device. So what I'm going to do is whip these bolts out, and here, there, the caliper's starting to come loose a bit. So two bolts there off the calipers. Now this should just be able to pry off. If we can't, we'll just get a little dead blow hammer. Just 
watch your rims guys when you do this because when they come they're gonna come so there you go i've got uneven pad wear i don't know if you can see that the outer pad is wearing quite well the inner pad is hardly being touched but we'll sort that right so you've got your caliper off I'm just going to try and feed that through there just enough so I can grab hold of it there you go and all I'm going to do is try and find somewhere to hang that that's good enough it's all I need all right so I've got that one off so now I'm going to go and do exactly the same on the other side guys that's both calibers off both supported now all right so you can see them just hanging there a bit of string absolutely no tension on that so the next thing we have to remove is the speedo drive so it's a positive screwdriver a bit awkward to get at to be fair all right let's see if we can do this it shouldn't be over tight but there you go so what we had was a screwdriver guys that we can put a spanner on because I didn't have enough angle, I just managed to get it like that, look, see? So as you can see here, guys, sorry about the weird angle, it's just a little screw just there, look. I could have moved the caliper out the way a little bit more, to be honest, guys. Right, there's your little screw that comes out of it, just like so, as you can see. Now this should, just pull out look there's your speedo drive right so next thing pinch bolts so we can just leave that hanging it's not going to cause any dramas now they should be 12 mil also yes they are all right so all we're going to do is just crack them we're not going to take them off that's cracked that's cracked same on this side look guys just crack it off crack it off there you go now the manual says you don't have to remove these all the way all the manual says is crack them off enough to release the axle bolt so axle bolt guys so this here is your axle bolt 22 mil there you go so you take the axle bolt all the way out that's your axle bolt guys A little small bolt this is the axle as you can see there guys, it's got a hole in it look. That hole is to enable you to put a screwdriver in there and finagle it out. Alright. However, before you do that guys, check there are spacers. So there's a spacer there and there's a spacer this side. I reckon the best position for this now is to sit in front of the bike. And it's just a case of wiggling it backwards and forwards and what we're waiting for is that spacer to come free this my left side the right side of the bike helps if you support the weight of the tire so kind of put it under your legs like that it's not coming very much so what i've found is a nice little 13 mil socket and then just give it a few gentle taps Just to see if I can get it started. See, it is coming now. Just little bits at a time, guys. So we've got it started. Very dry, the axle.
all right guys so that's the front wheel out you can see there calipers hung up on both sides there's the wheel over there all right so when it comes down to component parts so that there is your speedo drive so that's the hole there that little hole is where we took the phillips head screw out of now there's a little lug on the back of this see that lug there now that has to go and match up with that lug on the bottom of the fork leg there so it'll be something along the lines of that just to stop it rotating and then the inner bit spins and that's what gives you your speed all right when you reassemble this guys get out in the light why are we doing it in the dark so when we get out in the light you can see it there and it's just a little bit of grease where the axle goes through that's all so we can give this a clean up it's one of them parts that you never ever get to once it's on the bike you can also see the calipers are looking a bit dirty there so i'll give them all a good clean take the slide pins out re-grease them up i noticed i had one if anyone's noticed on my videos it was going tick 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 it was just where the uh, one of the slide pins was sticky in a bit so i'll take them out grease them all up and you can see the tire look there wasn't an awful lot left on it when you compare that to the new tire i don't know if you can see the the two different profiles there guys yeah can you see that yeah so this one's all nice and round that one's all squared off all right so that's why we're putting a new tire on all right guys so that's the front wheel off so i'm going to give it a wash jump in the car whiz it down there well paint i found a place in paint some tire fitters are quite funny as well unless you buy the tire from them direct they won't fit it for you all right so you have to shop around ring around i don't see why not a decent tire fitter decent company it tends to be the bigger chains that say no all right but just ring around the mall because some of the chains sometimes say yes ring around the mall ask them how much it'd be to fit a tire on a loose wheel that they aren't supplying a lot of them say oh we don't do that you have to buy the tires from us etc all right i found a place in painting yeah um i'll give them a shout out when i remember what they're called and yeah i think 15 quid he said he'll charge us if it's a loose wheel so I'll take the wheel off whiz it down get it done job done all right happy days guys i'll catch you when i'm back cheers Alright guys, so welcome back. Um, as you can see now, got the tyre on. Simple procedure, just reverse of the same one, but put the axle ball through. Make sure you put in the speedo drive, which is there. So that has to go in. And then on the other side, the, oh, on the other side, there's the little spacer. I don't know if you can see that there. There's a little spacer that has to go in. So nothing's tight, everything's just finger tight at the moment. And as you can see, I've got to fit calipers. I did take the opportunity around the calipers all cleaned while they're off. And you can see there, I've greased up the slide pins. Hopefully that stops that tick, tick, tick noise. Give the wheel a nice, solid, good clean. And there's the brand new tyre on. Okay. I'm going to set you up now, guys. And I'm going to leave you on, on time lapse. Alright guys, so that's it, pretty much back together, nothing's tight at the moment, I have put Loctite on the caliper bolts but they're not torqued up yet, pinch bolts aren't torqued up, axle bolt isn't torqued up, to get the pads back in I had to push the pistons back in, 
So when you push the pistons back in, take the top off the brake fluid reservoir and turn the handlebars to the left, which makes it awkward when you're doing the left side disc because what happens is all that fluid rises up then. If it's full, it'll all be spilling out under your paintwork. So what you have to use is a syringe, hypodermic or something, and pull some of that fluid out. What you don't want is to have it bone dry in there. So I've always got a bit of fluid in there. So now I'm going to have to bleed the brakes as well. Wheel spins all right. Now, there's two schools of thought, guys. Some people say talk it all up as is. A lot of people uh, say drop it down, bounce it up and down a few times on the, on the forks, roll it backwards and forwards just to centre everything and then tighten everything up, all right? So purely because I'm talking things up, I am going to drop it down. I'm going to roll it backwards and forwards a couple of times. I'm going to bounce up and down on the forks. And then I'm going to put it on the centre stand and talk everything up. It may be the wrong way, it may be the right way. There's a contrasting thought. The book, uh, it's in, the, in the book it says tighten them before you drop it down. So I'm going to go with the book. Right, so, talk setting. So front caliper mountain bolts on an NTV, 27 newton metres. Front axle bolt 60 newton meters. Front axle clamp bolt 22. So 22, 27, and 60. If you haven't got a torque wrench, guys, get yourself a torque wrench. You'll need one if you're going to do any kind of work on cars or bikes or whatever. It said in the book to do the pinch bolts first, and that was 22 newton meters. So 22 newton meters. I'm going to torque them both up roughly the same time. That's that one. Let's check it again. So 22. So the next one was the axle bolt, which was 60. There you go. Check once. Check twice. Check three times. 60 newton meters. Now brake caliper bolt. Sorry if all you can see is my ass. There you go. That's that side. The last thing I do is want to over tighten it or strip it. Uh, I think we've just stripped it. You are shitting me. Ah! Alright guys, so last belt, talking it up, bloody thing snapped on me, and it's a caliper bolt, so I can't take the chance, I need to get new caliper bolts, the strength and the high tensile, high tensile bolts, so I'm screwed, there's nothing I can do, I need the bike for Monday morning, it's half past four on a Saturday afternoon, what are you going to do, absolutely nothing. nothing. Worse than that. That's where it snapped. Look, that one there. And I'll tilt you sideways. I don't know if you can see in there. But it snapped inside the hole. So I'm going to have to take it all off again and hope that there's enough of the thread sticking out that I can get a pair of pliers on it and wind it. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Yeah. Working on your own bike, guys. It has its fucking downsides, I'll tell you. Spent all day changing the tyre, cleaning brake pads up. And now, just as I'm about to drop it off, last bolt to be talked up, 27 Newton metres, snap. Didn't do me no favours. So I'm screwed. Anyway, no point crying over spilt milk. I'm going to end this video there, guys. Until I get a solution. There's not a lot else I can show you. So I'm going to have to take the front caliper back off. Hope I can get the bolt off. I might film that again. Alright, cheers, guys. Alright, guys, so I've just put the caliper back off. Just show you, look just got a bit of thread so I may have got lucky I know it sounds daft 
but I may have got lucky and I might just be able to get a set of pliers on that and extract it. Don't you just love old bikes? There you go guys, get you out in the sunlight. Look, set of pliers and I was just able to pull the remainder of the bolt out, look. 